This episode of the Moose Hunt Podcast is recorded from beautiful Jackman, Maine, the evening before the 2022 Moose Lottery. This is a particularly exciting time for those of us in the moose hunting industry, as it's the evening before the names being drawn for all the lucky permit winners who are going to get the chance to potentially have a once in a lifetime experience of pursuing a Maine moose. We sit down with team member Ken Mayo and also new to the podcast experience, our dear friend Aaron Gentry, aka Captain G. Captain G takes us through an in-depth description of how he got into the outdoors, his former service, and takes us through his first ever commercial guided experience that locked him in to moose hunting forever. Enjoy. All right, and welcome to the Moose Hunt Podcast with OMM Outfitters. I'm your host, Chris Richards. Very excited. This is going to be an awesome episode of the Moose Hunt Podcast. I'm joined today by two of my distinguished colleagues, Mr. Ken Mayo. Hello, hello. And Mr. Aaron Gentry, a.k.a. Captain G. Captain G in the house! (laughs) You know, Captain G, I gotta tell you, I don't think I've called you Aaron since the third day I knew you. I don't even remember that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But we're coming today uh, from beautiful Jackman, Maine. We're actually really excited. We're up here for the 2022... Maine Moose Lottery Festival, which will be tomorrow, um, which is when the names will be pulled and the lucky permits will be drawn. Um, are you guys in? I'm in. I'm in. You're in? Yeah. We're ready. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm one of the fortunate ones. I'm still in my three-year <laughs> my, my three year wait. Um, but really looking forward to, to meeting everyone tomorrow. This is the first one of these that the state's done in person mm-hmm. since the world shut down basically. Yes. Um, so a lot of pent up, uh, I think ex- energy around, around doing this, but, um, really excited to have Aaron on today. Cause we're, we're all about, you know, obviously telling stories, sharing tips, information. We want this to be educational storytelling, a lot of laughs. And certainly, um, captain G has a storied history, um, professionally guiding, particularly for moose. Um, and is one of, And I'm sure y'all would agree, this team at OMM that's been put together from a like personality diversity standpoint, (laughs) um, everyone is one of a kind and Captain G absolutely helps us accomplish that. So, so I just say, you know, Aaron, like what, what started you in the outdoors? Like, how did you get, what, take us back for, you know, your story. How did it all begin for you? Well, you have to go back to uh, my childhood. I, I, I grew up as a military brat. My dad did 20 years uh, as a Navy uh, officer. And uh, so my life was spent around a lot of uh, ocean uh, where, we were de- where my father was deployed. Right. Um, so hunting in my early uh, life w- wasn't, wasn't uh, it, it didn't exist. So fishing was my first passion mm-hmm. that I absolutely fell in love with whether it was freshwater fishing or saltwater fishing. I mean, I literally passed by a water puddle and it'd be a mud puddle. And I'd be thinking, I wonder what's in that thing, <laughs> you know, and drove my mother nuts because I always wanted to fish. Right. Uh, everywhere we went. Um, and so it was a young age. I'd, I'd even catch fish down in Puget Sound and then sell it the fish that I caught. And then I would turn around and mow their yards because they're military Right. Always had to have clean, clean yards, clean yards and, and trimmed. So I took advantage of both. And, um, and then from there then, uh, from a very early age, I always wanted to fish. Yeah. And then we moved to uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And, and my dad being an officer, he had a, we had a beautiful house um, right next to the woods. And now we were in North Carolina. Right. And Sunday morning before we go to church. Back then, I mean, if you're my age, you know, 50 or over, we had hunting shows. <laughs> and, and, and they were, you know, real tree. Right. And all, you know, and all these other older shows were showing hunting deer and pigs. And, and it was just, it was an amazing world that I never knew. But I'd look out in my backyard and I see these deer. Right. And so I got my, my wheels grinding. 
So, and I'm around in the country, so a lot of these other uh, friends of mine, they hunted. And so I started asking. And yep. unfortunately, you know, my mother was anti-hunting. Okay. She was a huge tree hugger. You know, <laughs> if it didn't come in a package, it, you, you know, it, it wasn't right. You couldn't eat it. Yeah. Right, right. Absolutely. She hadn't, she was all right with me fishing because she loved to eat fish. Yeah. I'd fillet the fish, you know, saltwater fish, freshwater fish. I'd go shrimping. You know, I'd bring crabs home. So absolutely, she absolutely loved that aspect of what I did. Right. But then I started wanting to get in those woods because mm -hmm. I watched those shows, you know, and in the, in the excitement. You, you see, you know, the hunt and, in, and you see the harvest and the excitement of these people. And I was like, man, that looks cool. And I look in my backyard in the evenings, you, know, you see eight point bucks, those, you know, 10 point bucks. I'm like, wow, they're right here. Right. I could do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I started bugging my old man. I was like, hey, I want to go hunting. So I, I wasn't a very scholastic driven, you know, uh, student in school. Yeah. If I made a C, I was doing great. <laughs> but my father, you know, told, you know, he handed me a, a safety pamphlet. He says, you memorize this, and I'll test you on it, and then we'll go from there. Wow. I, thi I think it was by the end of that day, I had memorized the 25 pages of all the safety aspects of handling, safe handling that gun. No uh, I mean, and I knew everywhere in there. I was like, you got it done. <laughs> and by that evening, I was ready. And my old man, he was, he was like, all right. So he started testing me, and it was, you know, he was... I, I think he was generally one of those moments that he was kind of proud. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, oh, he's got this. Yes. You know, but I could see that the, my mother not being too thrilled because now, I, as far as I was concerned, I'm hunting now. <laughs> That's right. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going now. <laughs> you know, but there was, you know, but then he says, all right, I'll start you off with a bow. Learn this bow. Mm -hmm. So, and then I learned the bow. And then my very first hunt that, that fall was a dove hunt. And, okay. that, and that was, dove hunting is different than, than, than the deer hunting. It's more, deer hunting is more of an individual uh, sport. Right. You know, uh, you know activity yeah. that you do by yourself or one other individual. But this dove hunting is where the whole office was there in the morning. We all got there around a the campfire in the morning yeah. and we're all talking our game plan. You could smell the fire. And I was so excited because I spent my whole summer riding, you can't do this now, riding down to the, uh, the range with my shotgun over my handlebars. <laughs> How old were you? I, uh, I, was, I was in high school, so I yeah. think I was probably 17, okay. 16 or 17. Yeah. So that's when you... That, into... That's when I started coming into the hunting. Yep. yep. You know, because I showed my proficiency in the bow. Yep. And then, you know, and then my dad bought me my first uh, 20 gauge shotgun. Yep. Well, yep. I think I polished that thing every night. <laughs> that's awesome. I would take it apart, Amazing. put it back together, polish it. Take it apart, put it back together, polish it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that was like the coolest thing was like the Red Rider BB gun. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, the, the most lethal weapon there. <laughs> <that's laughs> <you're talking. laughs> So we get there, and it's just, it was everything, you know, because my anticipation, you know, you, you, in life, you, you, you get your, your expectations of something, and you get there, and you usually let down because your mind has put such a, a high standard of what you expect. Right. This was everything. Mm. It met everything. Yeah. Because here you are with all these, all these guys, and they're all talking hunting, hunting stories, you know. Even better than the show because I, I I'm with these guys. Right, you're living. You know, it. I'm living it, and I was like, now all of a sudden, this guy over here, he just told a story. In my mind, you're a legend. Right. And right. this guy over here tells a story <laughs> yeah. about a hunting story. I just met another legend. Right. I was like, you know, whatever it was, you know, it could be just bird hunting, it could be deer hunting or pig hunting. I was like, man, look at all these legends. Mm -hmm. These guys, you know, these were the guys I was first started looking up to. You know, they were military uh, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, so very, very precise, but they, they had a, they had an aura about them, you know, where there was a, there was a, uh, a brotherhood. Right. You know, teamwork. Yes. You know, so, you know, 
so we get out there in this first field in the morning, in the early hours, and, you know, of course, the teamwork of these military guys. The one guys would get on the field, the freshly cut field, and they start walking these fields, and these doves start popping up, and these doves come over. And I had a single-gauge shotgun, and there was a... So a single-shot shotgun. Single-shot shotgun. I had figured out how to put shells in between my fingers and almost make it sound like it was a pump shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to show me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, back then, it was the, the one that, that released underneath by yeah. the trigger. I got, I've got an old uh, Stevens like that. I wish I had I, never gotten rid yeah. of it because you can't find them now. They're you all cannot, released on the top. That's right. You cannot <laughs> find them anymore. Trigger guard release. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I want to say my old man may have bought it at Walmart. Yep. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Or even yep. Sears. Yep. Yep. You know, we yep. had a Sears in town, so I, I'm not sure where he got it from. But it was the best gun ever because it was mine. That's right. And I was that's very, right. very, very, you know, I was very precise with it. And uh, there was a chief in the in the group and uh he was kind of razzing me he's like did you bring enough shells and i was like well what's the limit he goes 14 i was like well i got 15 i think i have enough and he started laughing you know you know like <laughs> yeah right you little you're, 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 little, you're thinking i'm being cocky and, and me i just it was just confidence right because i knew i knew i was going to get everything that flew by me i was going to get him <laughs> and as these birds started coming by i was dropping them every single one of them 14 was i think the limit at that time and i had and and, and, and now i was coming back after the morning hunt i was cocky because i i told the chief i says hey i got one left for you <laughs> and then i started pulling out all my birds i says i'm done for the day <laughs> <laughs> Classic. See what I would have done. <laughs> I'd have said I got fifteen, but I probably would have had eighty-five. <laughs> and so I could say, "Here's." And the my old man was sitting there watching me drop them because he was just, you know, uh, you know, twenty yards away, and I'm just dropping them, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And it was just, and after that, I was absolutely the love of the outdoors. I felt mm -hmm. complete. Yeah. You know, this was the 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 stepping stone that that kept me in the game even years later when i was out of it because of military i joined the military and i was out of it for quite a few years and then being down in texas yep. everything's leased right so uh if you don't make a lot of money if you don't have a lot of pals and you don't get in on a lease you hunt public land and you know, i just decided to just go fishing instead yeah because there's just not there's it's not there right yep. you know um you don't know the right people then it's yeah. a challenge. It's a yeah. very, very challenging down in, in Texas. Right. And but, so, <laughs> and so that's, that, what I think is fascinating about that story is the, the almost like instant success even. Yes. Like that's, that's rare. At I, least it was for me. And maybe it's because yeah. you were 16, 17 when you started. And my old man was, you know, uh, my father was very, you, you need to go down there and practice. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, and and back then, you know, uh, on Camp Lejeune, they they had they had a skeet range and an mm -hmm. archery range, so right. I would I would go to both, and they were both beautiful facilities, well maintained, and it was one of those where they even had the rabbit shoots, wow. and you can have different angles and different speeds, right? You know, shoot out, and then uh, I learned from a very early age because my dad was an officer, uh, a lieutenant commander at the time. I got charged more because of my, my father's rank. And I learned to tell them that my, my dad was a private <laughs> so I can shoot more. Hustling. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it all get, makes sense now. So, so instead of getting charged, you know, 10 bucks for the, for the day, I was getting charged, you know, five. Right. You know, so I was like, well, I'm twice as often. That's right. So it was, it was, it was a great time to be alive, you know, and, and, and be into firearms and then, you know, and, finding myself right uh, at that at that particular point you know where I, I was i had the ability to practice right you know nowadays it's very expensive to do something like that yeah yeah. you know right. but it, it was just and that just grew because we every 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 fall mm -hmm. I, I looked forward mm -hmm. to doing that yeah. and then that went right into you know deer hunting with the same guys right you know and it just and I remember going on my very first deer hunt. It was one of those, you know, uh, you know, because my old man had now I had progressed to a 35, mm -hmm. you know, lever action. 
Right. 35 Remington. 35 Remington. Marlin 336. Yes, you yep. bet. That's Pounded it. Them. Iron yep. sights. Yep, iron I got sights. Prof- I got proficient enough. I would go shoot with my, my, now my father is a very, he, he's a marksman. Yeah, I wouldn't categorize him as a much of a hunter, mm-hmm. but he is a remarkable marksman. Right. I, he, I could tell him, you know, now as a guide, you need to shoot, you know, this animal here. He'll do it. Yeah. Put it right there. Yeah. You know, a hundred yards, two hundred yards, three hundred yards. As long as that that rifle or that that firearm is is on on sight, he's got no problem with it. Yeah. Even today, even when he wears glasses, yeah, yeah, and it's very impressive. Even with a handgun or a rifle, shotgun, on, he'd shoot all day. Try to drag him out, and go hunting. Well, he has to answer to my mom, <laughs> who still, <laughs> who still, still doesn't love it. <laughs> does not love it. So, speaking of your mom, so seventeen-year-old Captain G, well, Aaron at the time, then, right, <laughs> riding around on right. the bike, comes home. Pocket full of birds. I mean, how was that? Tell me what that was like. Oh, it, mean, it was like coming coming home from a state championship with a trophy. <laughs> For me personally. Right, yeah. right. Because I was a very small individual at that time. Believe it or not, I, when I went to high school, I didn't even weigh 100 pounds. Wow. I was like 98 pounds, I think, soaking wet. Right. You know, so I learned how to be very fast because I was in a military school. Yep. You, you got to be fast. You know, people talk about, oh, I'm bullied. No, I... I I could have been, but I was just faster than the bullies. That's right. <laughs> we, you learned the flight. Yeah. And what's, what's ironic about this, you know, so many you know, people out there listening, maybe never, obviously never seen Captain G. And Captain G is actually a captain. Like, he, he actually carries captain. the title, is a legit captain. Um, is like a rugged. He's a beast. Like <laughs> person, like a, a strong yes. individual. So it's, it's a funny to hear you say going to college weighing. <laughs> 95 pounds or something yeah. like that um so you get into the bird hunting you're into the you know obviously you said you went into the military how did maine and moose hunting oh. like how did that happen was it was it military placement that put you here was it a yep. vacation or what was it no it was it was military my wife's family is from new england Okay. Um, she still has family that lives in Maine. She's originally from Frenchville. Okay. A lot of her family's from Frenchville. Uh, moved down south. Um, uh, now her, her grandparents and where her parents are from are from Boston, uh, just outside of Boston, Gloucester, Holbrook, mm-hmm. um, uh, in that area, a Braintree yep. uh, area yep. down Braintree there. Mass, yeah. So when I got stationed uh, after my... Um, my first station after boot camp, I, I got stationed, requested um, Massachusetts on a 270-foot cutter in the mm-hmm. Coast Guard. Yep. Because um, she was, uh, I think, like six months pregnant, seven months pregnant by the time we got here. Yeah. I wanted her to be at least have family close by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You awesome. Know? Uh, so that's where we went. We, we, had, we, um, we had two children uh, in Massachusetts, and then I went away to school uh got my mo which was a machinery technician went down to north carolina or south carolina charleston for a little while i thought i was going to back to corpus christi because i was pretty excited to go to corpus christi because i you know at at that time once i was in the military i hadn't hunted yeah right. just didn't bother yeah it didn't right yeah didn't and then it. and then i got to north carolina and started to get back into it because I thought I was going to go back to Char- or, uh, Corpus Christi. The boat that I was on moved to Charleston, South Carolina. And that's when I got back into the, the, the hunting right. there um, and started doing it, I wouldn't say very successfully. Mm-hmm. You know, I was doing it in between stuff and I had two you know, newborn kids trying to do it like on a, a weekend stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. But I was blessed enough in an area that, you know, has... I don't know, you know, five deer for every square mile. Yeah. You know, so you basically sit still and you're going to have something walk on you. Right. <laughs> you know, but then I, I made rank fairly quickly and then got stationed in Maine. Okay. I had an opportunity to go back to Maine or go to Maine. I'd been there. I, our, my boat had gone to Maine. I absolutely loved it yep. because the, the nostalgia of a foggy, you know, port that like just, rocky it coast. Just, it just, yeah. everything that, you know, like, 
when you read, you know, about Moby Dick. Right. <laughs> right. This, yeah. this is it. Like this, this is, is this, it. this is the place, man. These guys are rugged. There's fishermen all over the place. These are my kind of guys. Yeah. You know, they, they must love it because they, they're doing it for a living. Right. right. And it was the waterfront. They, you know, just, I just absolutely fell in love with the place. So that's what brought me to Maine. But I started to hunt. I started actually having time to hunt. Mm-hmm. And I found out I sucked at it. <laughs> I really found out that I, I, I wasn't a very good hunter. Right. Because down south, you do a lot of shooting. Right. There's no hunting in cornfields and tobacco fields and all these other fields, you right. know, soybean fields. Because these deer come out and, you know, they're... They, you know, every 15 minutes are waddling out there to go chew on something. You just sit in a stand, and all, that's like you said, you, you, all you got to do is be still. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're all over the place. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, so I got like a spoil. Right. I get the main. My first year, I didn't even see a deer. <laughs> <laughs> my second year, I saw one. Running it, away. It wasn't it didn't run away. I just saw the one. I was like, oh my god, there's a deer. There, <laughs> they oh, do oh, exist. They do exist. And uh, that's all I saw was was a rear end of a deer going away from me as it's pouring down cold rain on me in, in, in November. Yep. And I'm like, and that was the last day of that season. Wow. I made a decision after that season. It's like I gotta put in more time. Mm-hmm. I gotta learn this. Yep. I gotta figure this out because I'm gonna just gonna go fishing if this keeps up, right? <laughs> because this is a waste of time. Because <laughs> my wife's like, you're going and buying this license at the time, you know, it was twenty or thirty dollars, whatever, whatever it was at the time. Right. You spent all this money, and I don't see anything in the freezer. <laughs> you know, I'm like she wanted, she she wanted product. She, right. You know, she yeah. wanted something for the energy I was putting in it, and I get it. I go did, get the bacon. I, right. I, I did too. You know, I wanted to bring home that trophy. Right. You know, so. That following year, I, I bought, a, I think, a camera. A trail camera, A yeah. trail camera, and I'm using it, and sometimes I screw it up. Sometimes I forget to turn the stupid thing on and get back there a week later, and I'm like, Durr! I was like, really? But I spent a lot of time in there learning the trails. Right. Learning the times they were going. So I was, you know, I was, I was spending time. Now, I was not just going out in the woods. I was mm-hmm. spending time preseason. I was spending time learning the animal that I wanted to to show that, you know, I, I can do it. Right. You know, these deer in Maine, they don't just, you know, walk in front of you. Right. Oh, you, yeah. You, and, and, they're, and, and if you don't play everything right, the wind right, the time right, you know, uh, they wind you, they're gone. Mm-hmm. You don't play the time right. You don't see anything. You know, so I spent a lot more time, more time, trying to learn these animals than I did actually hunting these mm-hmm. animals. Right. In my third year, boom. I, I think I was out there. I, I was archery hunting and expanded archery. I went out there 15 minutes, and I got my first deer. In May. Yeah. In May. Nice. I was, it was a small one, maybe a 120-pound doe. Yep. But, again, that felt like coming home with a state championship. <laughs> right. Because I was like, yeah, I got to go to the, to the check-in station. Give all my info in. That's right. I wanted to pay my two dollars. I wanted everybody to know. I was so excited. Was it like this? Ah, (laughs) You did it. You did it. It (laughs) was. I was so excited that I had actually, you know, the hard work that I had put into it paid off so fast. Yes. You know, and what was great about it that I did the expanded archery. Back then, now I can go rifle hunting. And because of my time I spent in the woods, same success. Right. And I then was the done. rifle hunting. I was out there and I had like a little four pointer. Yep. Boom. Done. First day. Right. Nice. You know, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Look at this. And then I'm telling people, you know, about my success and, and then talking to a lot of novice, I guess you would call them, or, or your weekend warriors. I've talked to people have gone five years without without shooting an animal, and I'm like, man, I, I yeah, I would definitely be a fisherman <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't do that. I right. couldn't do it. Yeah. There's too much time and energy put into that for me to, you know, I, I have to 
for me, I have to have something to, sh- to show for, for the for the time I put in right. to it. Right. You know, I, I want to come home with that trophy. Right. You know, whether it's a doe or it's a buck, to me, putting meat in that freezer meant more than anything else. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I, I, I harvest this. I put the time in there. Now my family gets to enjoy it. Right. My friends who come over, I get to cook, and they get to enjoy it. So it was more of a, you know, I, you know, it was, I felt pride. Yeah. You yeah. know, I was like, Absolutely. man, I've, I've done something. Now I can share it. Right. You know, so it wasn't just all about the kill. And I think I got a lot of that from my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to kill something, you better eat it all. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was eating the livers. I was eating the hearts. I was eating everything. You know, and you that's, know? that's one thing I'll say about you is, um, you know, having been around you for, you know, a few years now and stuff, um, hunting, guiding up north in the moose woods, um, you know, it's prime grouse country. And I remember coming home <laughs> or back to the lodge one night before the clients got up there for moose season. And I don't know if you know this, Kenny, I'm out there cleaning birds and I'm, you know, I'm flaying breasts out and, and all this uh, rough grouse out. And Captain G comes up, he goes, well, what are you doing with the hearts? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, those those grouse hearts are awesome. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, they are. I, I just, but to, it's it's such a representation, absolutely. Of you know, you talk about these legends in your life. Yeah. You know, you, your mother, probably has had as much influence. Oh, definitely. You know, as anyone. You know, we didn't eat the grouse hearts that where I grew up. Yeah. I, yeah. Same here. Yeah. yeah. And so. It was yeah. something awesome that I immediately saw about you. I'm like, yeah. you know, Captain G, if there's an edible piece of <laughs> anything, <laughs> he's going to find it. Is, is eating it, right? He's eating it. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So you became proficient in your hunting. Yeah, I actually started feeling like I, 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 I had a skill. Yeah. You know, nice. and then I knew that there was bear hunting. Mm-hmm. in Maine I seen a couple while I was out there deer hunting you know you bump one and it's like oh my goodness look at that thing you know just a beautiful animal yeah mm-hmm. you know and how fast they move people don't realize how fast a bear can move through and the woods quietly mm-hmm. and quietly and then once you start them it's like it's like a track star right mm-hmm. and it's just like holy cow that was amazing you know uh, and then the moose you know, when I when I first moved in my second house there in Maine, we had moose until they built, you know, a, a, a development behind the house. Right. I had moose back there. Mm-hmm. We had moose cross the backyard. So all that, you know, I was like, oh, now I, I, I've hard, harvested, you know, my I'm starting to get proficient at harvesting deer. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at these, you know, these bears and these moose. So obviously... You know, they're like, oh, you bait for them or you trap them, and they're very hard to get. You know, the moose, you need a guide. So I started looking at all this stuff. Yeah. And I started looking. Yeah. And then now I have three children at, at this time now. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking there's no way uh, on this earth that my wife's going to let me spend $6,000. To go moose hunting. To go moose hunting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't. I, it's, it's just. It, yeah, it's not happening. Right. You know, right. I'm not even, even going to bring it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I started looking into the bear. And this, then I found this guy doing bear hunts for, for vets for free. Yeah. So I did that. Uh, I wasn't successful. But again, I, I liked it because I was out there. It was a new animal. It was a new skill set. Completely different than deer hunting. Right. You know what what you do and how you do it, and and then even the the, the scent control was a whole new level that I hadn't considered. Yep. So learn I was learning new levels. I was upping my game because I was going after different animals, and then I wanted to keep doing that, but then you know it cost money. Right. And that's what kind of led me into the idea. I ran into I was at a Bible study. Nice. And mm-hmm. and these guys were talking about this other guy, like he was, like this, he was a he was a main guide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was almost they talked to him as about him as as as, as he was, you know, a, a, a deity. <laughs> he was a main guide. He knows everything. 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 <laughs> he knew everything about the woods. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish that was the case, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be so nice. Yeah. So 
these guys were, and you could tell that you know these these other gentlemen in the Bible study, they're older gentlemen. The the respect they had for him was because he was a main guide. Right. Mm-hmm. That that was the title. That, that was a title. And yeah. when you when people talk about main guides, I noticed that that they were like he's the heartbeat of these woods. You know that was that was their 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 perception of what a main guy was he knew everything right you know and that uh, caught my attention you know the the the, the mystical being of mm-hmm. being a main guy i was like what's that so i started looking at that and now years later i started getting closer to retiring so as i'm getting at almost five years getting out i knew i didn't want to do an office job right mm-hmm. i did not want to go to uh, a shipyard and be an engineer. I, I had some overseas experience, and and and, and I, 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 you know, my my love of people kind of you know went down a little bit. So I liked the woods because mm-hmm. the woods seemed to talk to me. Yeah, there was a love there that you know a relationship there. I wanted to know more. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, you know, and knowing about the main guides, but I could become a guide. I could take people moose hunting and do it every year. And do it every year. Every year. And there's three seasons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could do it three times a year. Right. You know, so to me that, you know, because at that time I was taking my other two kids hunting. Mm-hmm. I was taking them turkey hunting. I was taking them deer hunting. And, we're, and, and I loved it because their excitement mm-hmm. was just as much, you know, hanging out with me than right. it was doing the kill. You know, doing a harvest shot. It was more about when I was with those guys my first day deaf hunting. Right. You know, you're out yeah. there with these, with these fellas, and that's what I fell in love with. I didn't fall in love with, with, with taking a life of a dove. Right. I fell in love with the people I was with. Yes. You know, and, and the moment you're there, it's just, you know, and I don't think that'll ever go away. No, and it, I think it, it's, that it's a good well, point because it's not... You know, there's so many folks who don't understand why we have the passions we have, why we invest the time we do, um, and, you know, associate. It, it is serious business. You are taking the life of something or attempting to, but there's the, the return of why you, the pursuit yeah. is so much more than bloodlust. I would say it's the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how many times we were, you know, on our way up here to, to Jackman today, you know, on the ride up, um, sharing a story about going out to Colorado. And you're like, oh, my God, we had the most incredible time. We didn't get an elk, but, oh, my God, that would have been great. But And you were raving about your experience you had. Yeah. And you know, I think to someone who doesn't understand that, they might look at that and say, oh, well, I guess they failed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the way we look at it is it's a overall picture it's the experience being able to show them and have have that experience with the client and you know that's what we saw in Aaron when you know he first came on board with us his passion and you can still you can hear it in his voice the way he talks about it the way he carries himself that you know it's it's way more than just about a kill and you know that's that's what's great about our team and some of these team members that uh, you guys are going to meet and uh, Aaron's story here. It's, uh, it's great. So I got a question. Yeah. Shoot. Your first moose oh. hunt, client, commercial. Okay. 48 inches plus. Wow. So a good one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a small one. Really? That we saw. Yeah. Yep. 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 That was... I started working with an outfitter in the North Main Woods. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I interned under another fella the first year. Mm-hmm. Um, all my job was just to help, watch, and listen. Yep. Learn. Yes, and, and just learn. Mm-hmm. Just take it all in. And that was, that's what I did. I helped, watched, and learned. And then the next year, they set me free. You know, this is, you want, you want to do a moose hunt? And I was like, you bet I do. That's right. That's why I'm here. This is why I'm here. (laughs) I was like, oh my goodness. And that first, you know, I just was freshly retired, you know, from the military, 20 years in the military. Right. So here I am in the North Main Woods, my second year working for this outfit. And I'm, I'm doing it. Right. I'm doing it. I finally 
reached what felt like you know one of those pinnacles yes you know as you know where you achieve achieve the super bowl the world series yeah it is you know here i am standing here now i have i'm, I'm I, you know it's one thing to get there right it's another thing to win it mm-hmm. to to finally you know come away with that ring right I had to come away with that ring. Yeah. So I, I was coming away with that ring yeah. because I've worked too hard. Yeah. I, I've put a lot of time, you know, away. You know, people don't realize guides put a lot of time into it away from their loved ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. We to, do. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I, I wanted to come home with a story. Right. You know, I wanted to come home with a success. You know, hey, all your patients, guess what? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You know, um, the first day we, um, we, uh, you know, and being new at it, I, I did some things that kind of screwed up uh, a, a 55 plus inch, maybe closer to 60 inch bull first mm-hmm. thing in the morning. Which for, you know, Maine, Eastern Canadian moose. Huge. That's, I mean, 55, 60 inches yeah, is, big, yeah. I mean, that's the pinnacle. That's and exceptional. I, I knew he was that's in huge. there and I, I and, and, and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes before legal. Opening day? Opening day. <laughs> standing. <laughs> Hello. And I'm just telling the guys, like, just you before. know, I, w- I was like, Lieutenant Dan, sit down. Shut up. That's right. Just sit <laughs> <laughs> Don't breathe. Shut up. You know, don't make any noises. So I was waiting for the right time. And, you know, once daylight hit, I knew he was back there. I could hear him thrashing. Yeah. But being a greenhorn... I made some pinnacle mistakes. Mm-hmm. Learn them. And he never came back out. Right. You know, and then that day progressed into other, in it, but we got to another spot. And, and at that time, I was using electronic call yeah. as well. Right. I get to this other spot, my electronic call dies. <laughs> it was my first day. And I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, because my confidence in my calling you're in your your like vocalization. Oh my was, god! Yeah. I, I I thought I was sounding like a dying a dying you know deer, <laughs> not or maybe a dying raccoon. Nothing that sounded like anything remotely like a, a moose. Yeah. So I, I did. I you know I was like, all right, I, I know the cow call. So we would go to shadow to shadow on this road a mile down and worked all the way back up. We get almost to the back, and here jumps out another fifty incher in front of us and i'm telling mike shoot it shoot it shoot it and then the moose ran away oh yeah mm-hmm. you'll have that. and then i'm running after this thing i'm i'm, I'm bolting i'm like maw, 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 trying to get them to stop and i look behind me and they're just standing there and i'm like what are you doing <laughs> get over here so that day ended with you know a, a, a botched you know on my part yeah you know, doing things wrong. As I look back at it, I, there were certain things I shouldn't have done, certain things I should have done. Right. You know, ways I call, not call. I, you know, I should have gone after them, but I didn't go after them. You know, it's just, you know, there was a lot of different aspects to that, why I didn't. Um, but, you know, inexperience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On my part. So I'm trying to make up for it, and I did. I called on another one. I was like, Dah! So that day ended it on a, you know, on, on a, you know, adrenaline low note, you know, because you get two monster bulls, in my mind, that, that show up. But the, that's also when you think about being a rookie, that low note. But now it's like we had a chance at two world-class 50-plus mm-hmm. inch bulls today, and it's day one. Yep. Yeah. Like, so that day keep, ends. Keep the faith. But, but no doubt, your first year, you're like, I don't know how many more of these I'm going to get. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because, you know, I, my other year, I've seen guys go pass up on – you know, decent bulls, and then not see another one. Absolutely, right. and no, go home happen. without them. Yep. I'm like, then that was my biggest fear. Right, I was like, I don't want to go home without one. I want these guys to shoot something. Right, you know, and uh, we heard another bull mating after that debacle with the one, the 50 inch in front of us, with a cow. You hear him going off, oh, oh, and the cows just, oh, oh, oh. you know, doing the whole mate dance thing. We didn't go after it. I didn't want to, you know, because my inexperience, I wanted to be able to call him out. I knew he was busy. Right. I also knew that if he's almost done mating, he's going to be in this area, and I should be able to call him out. Mm-hmm. He's going to be looking for another one. Mm-hmm. The next morning, we go out there at the same spot, 
part a truck. I get the electronic all, all set up, and I start the, the whole um, and um, That's right. because I want you know. But for me, that it was a great tool. Right, it was a great time. tool, and it worked. Yep. Because I looked around, and there here's a here's this monster bull with this great pomage. I turn around and go, oh, hey guys, turn around, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and we already had decided that either one gets a shot. They've taken it. I'm yep. not even questioning it. Right, because the sub and the sub and the permit holder both. Yeah, there's right? a yep. whole nother aspect of guiding. That you know, another story we can get into with that whole mm -hmm. thing right, right. there. Um, but we've, you know, I took control and said, whoever gets the next shot is taking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that thing stepped out, took two steps, and I say, shoot it. She takes her her old, her grandpa's. Uh, I, I want to say it was a thirty-five. Yeah, it was a thirty-five. Right. Yeah. Hits it perfect, right in the bread basket, and then as it's running away. Mike finishes it off with an with uh, instant kill shot. In the Perfect. <laughs> I put that thing right in the back of the truck. <laughs> and I tell you what, I, was, I, was, I saw that thing, 48, I want to say 48 and a quarter. Yep. Inch bull. Yep. Uh, you never forget that one. Oh, my God. It, it, it could have been a 70 inch. I didn't care. Right. Because yeah. it, was, it was a monster. That thing was just under a thousand pounds field dressed. Wow. wow. Yeah, big one. A big yeah. bull, beautiful dark brown rack, wide palmage. Everything. And it, everything it had they... everything that, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 Well, that, dude, that's awesome. I mean, to have success like that, you know, you know getting into guiding, um, you know, you've done well, and I think everyone can tell, you know, from a passion perspective, you said that well, Kenny. I think uh, Captain G, um, when he tells stories, when he tells hunting stories and you know moose guiding stories, <laughs> it's I feel like I'm there. Like yeah, you know, you know every detail, every blade of grass, and so, well, that's awesome. So you know we're we're coming to the 40 minute mark here, and so I think we'll um, jump off in just a second here. But I just want to say thank you for joining us, and um, stay tuned for the next episode coming soon. Thank you.